Previously on Eugene's A Traveling Drummer's Diary. The story continues a couple of weeks after rehearsing with the guys in Poland. My trip was pretty much the same this time. Our first gig was in Gdansk, which is a long way from literally any other place. Polski bus to Krakow, I got picked up there and we traveled to Warsaw to meet up with Piotrek. Before having a well-deserved 4-hour nap, we had to take our hyperactive roommate for an early morning walk. A couple of hours later, we were getting ready to continue our journey. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, yeah, now I'm gonna help you out trim your head. We encountered traffic jam multiple times on the road. Sometimes these things are just unavoidable, but if you know you're gonna drive across a heavily populated area, make sure you think about possible traffic jams while getting in or out of the city. Tip number five, include extra time in your approximate time of arrival to the venue. Most of the time bands spend their tour on the road, obviously. Unfortunately, many bad things can happen. You can get hurt not only because other drivers don't pay attention on the road, but the gear you carry inside your car might become your undoing. Tip number 6. Bags might kill you, lol. One should not expect limousines and huge stadiums while playing death metal. A friendly neighborhood, Cozy venue with human-sized backstage and wireless is all the comfort people of the lower class of music industry can hope for. I was lucky enough to play this pretty two-kick Mapex kit that Jarosz from Shodan was willing to provide us with for these seven shows. Expect no fancy catering. If you're lucky enough, the generous local promoter might provide you with enough money to get something from the nearest kebab stand before the gig. If you behave well and play a proper gig, you will be rewarded with delicious cold pizza after your show. As a safety precaution, buy lots of bottled water in case nobody will provide it to you. Bottom line is, nobody really needs you. Tip number 7. Take care of each other on the road, especially of those with special needs. If you require a sound check, don't waste other people's precious time. I just set up my electronics and pedals. The rest was not that important, so I used Shodan cymbal set. Sorry, Beisty. People who know me know that I don't do any drugs. I try not to consume any energy drinks whatsoever before the gigs. But if you sleep literally nothing and feel like shit, you gotta do something to save the show, cause playing 240 plus BPM death metal is not a piece of cake. Right after the gig we packed our gear and went straight to our hostel. It turned out to be nothing fancy of course, but clean and warm, all you can wish for after a really tiring day. It was a small room that had double deck beds. This is what you usually get in cheap hostels, so make sure you choose your neighbor wisely. The moment you arrive, get your wet stage clothes out of your bag. Even if the place you are staying at doesn't have any heating system, drying your stuff is a must. You don't want to smell the whole tour like blue cheese. Even if you don't mind it, you're not alone and you have to respect your bandmates. Tip number 8. Dry stage clothes, more enjoyable trip. I was hoping to get some rest after the exhausting last 24 hours, but that night went horribly wrong. I'm not proud of what happened and I don't usually do this, but the drinking kinda went out of control and we did all sorts of stupid things like thrashing other people's property, walking around the city at 3am in shade, searching for more alcohol, being in the river, being in the trash bin, peeing on Nurgle, Going to a disco club, picking up some French chicks unsuccessfully. Going to an amusement park, singing something in Polish. Paying the most miserable visit in the history of mankind to a strip club, then getting kicked out for not buying anything there. And much, much more. So we managed to get back to the hostel. It was our duty to be dick 
heads one last time and say a proper good morning to the rest of the guys. Thinking back, Gdansk is a really nice city. I enjoyed our stay even if I barely remember anything. No matter how exhausted we were, it was time to check out and leave. Neither kicking the guys would wake them up, nor the janitor lady threatening us by calling the cops. Ubert, come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. The best course of action one can take after a night like ours is to clean their mouth hole the moment they wake up. No need to say that can be a lifesaver. It was really nice to get out and meet some of the other survivors on the streets. The smart guys weren't lazy and woke up earlier to have some breakfast. Playing in smaller bands results in almost inevitable constant consumption of junk food. Even if you're literally back from the dead, don't miss a chance to eat something warm which will help you last longer on the road. Tip number 9. Filling your stomach in the morning instead of sleeping an extra 30 minutes is worth it. The closest acceptable thing I could find was a sandwich. <laughs> you're right! Anyway, we were ready to continue our trip. Next stop was Płock. The rest of the trip wasn't as wild as before, fortunately. No matter how much of a party animal you are, there is a point where your body will just say stop. The conditions were the same as usual. Nobody will treat you like a king unless you treat yourself as one. The Płock show turned out to be the most crowded, probably because it was a Saturday, the best day for a gig. We set our merch, did the sound check, regular tour routines. We were kindly treated with some proper catering this time, which was really nice for a change of pace. In the end of the day, some of us didn't make it. If that's the case, you should get some food for your sleeping bandmates, hoping for them to return the favor someday. So we went to get some stuff, which was killer, literally. We took the leftovers back to the venue for the guys. We slept at the promoter's apartment, which is quite a common situation. Next day morning, we packed our gear. With time and experience, you learn how to properly pack the car so you can fit more and more stuff, which will keep surprising you again and again. Make sure your smelly stuff gets in the back, not in front of your face. Tip number 10. Stage clothes might protect your car windows. On our way to Łódź, which was the last gig in Poland, we encountered a homeless guy who sneaked into our car, pretended to be our bass player and took a nap. Which is a big industrial city with a population of roughly 700,000. We were looking forward to a big crowd that night and we had, wait for it, eight people, as far as I remember. Well, of course it was a Sunday, but it was a pity because the venue looked really cool, except for the fact that the mixing board was in the backstage for some weird reason, which was kind of a big deal, but then they had it sorted out in the end. We took care of our hunger by ourselves. No idea why, but I decided to record the gig, I had all the reasons not to, but then this happened. Pretty cool, huh? Tip number 11. Good stands won't let your cymbals fall. Well, show must go on, as they say. There was no mood for a celebration after the gig, so we had at home. It was not over yet. My bus was departing from Kaku at 7 a.m. We got there three hours before that, so we had to kill time somehow. The guys gave me a really cool midnight city tour. The guys left, so I still had to wait more than an hour outside in the freezing cold. Everything was closed, I had no chance to get somewhere inside, warm. By some unexplainable miracle, I didn't get sick. Hours later, I was enjoying the sunny tropics and vast landscapes of eastern Slovakia. I was heading home, to Ukraine. Next time, my adventure continues with the remaining shows of this tour in Prague, Banska Bystrica, Nitra and Budapest. Thanks for watching, hope to see you again, Eugene out. Still here? 
make sure you check out these as well.